There are a few differences between vanilla JavaScript and JavaScript and Observable because Observable uses a reactive model of data flow and code execution. The vast majority is the same, but it's important to know what's different and why. If you're brand new to JavaScript, we recommend taking a look at our Just Enough JavaScript tutorial, which is linked from the notes below this video. Variable assignments look different from vanilla JavaScript, where you'd use var, let, or const to declare a variable. An assignment in Observable both declares the variable and assigns a value to it. And that value is immutable, meaning it can't be changed by code. We'll get to local variables that can in a moment. You can, of course, change the value, like in this case, by clicking the Run button in the right edge of the cell. When I do that, Observable then reruns all the code that depends on this variable. Immutable variables might seem like a limitation, but they're necessary for Observable's many useful features to work. And they encourage a more functional programming style of thinking that leads to cleaner and more reusable code. This includes methods like map, filter, and so on, which operate on arrays, as well as the many useful utility functions built into D3. For example, if you wanted to sort our Olympians dataset into subsets for each sport, we could do that by iterating through the athletes and adding them to arrays inside of an object. Or we could just use d3.group with an accessor function. If you're not familiar with these functions, this might seem a little bit arbitrary. There are many useful functions available in Observable by default, and many more can be found in JavaScript packages that you can import. Finding the ones that work for you will make building notebooks much faster and easier. What if you want to write something more complex than a single line of code? To organize code into logical chunks, you can use blocks or functions. These work just like in vanilla JavaScript. A block is enclosed in curly braces and has to return a value. Local variables defined inside a block with let or var are mutable, just like you would expect. This block sums up the values from 1 to the values specified by the range slider. Note that the sum and i variables are mutable. The block reruns when max value is changed, just as you would expect from reactive code. Functions are declared and called just like in vanilla JavaScript. Note that in this case, I'm not using the global max val, but rather the function argument max. I can also reuse the local variable names since they are local to a block or function. Calling the function with the max val value yields the same result as before. Because the function call depends on that value, it is also rerun when I change the value with the slider. If a cell consists of only a single object literal, it needs to be wrapped in parentheses as well as curly braces. This is not necessary inside code blocks or functions, though. Many useful JavaScript functions work asynchronously, for example, when they retrieve data over the network. They immediately return a promise, which in turn is then resolved once the data is available. Observable implicitly awaits promises on the top level of a cell. For example, this picture of a line which is attached to a notebook. The file attachments function returns a promise, which later resolves as an image. If I wanted to use the same function instead of code, I would still have to use the await keyword. This allows me to access the promise itself, which I might want to use in other ways, perhaps to catch an error or to pass it to another function that expects a promise. Next, let's look at how notebooks can be remixed by forking them or importing the cells into other notebooks.